you went to the universities to study uh, university rather to study Yoruba. I was going to ask you, what were you intending? To, I mean, what career opportunities are available to you? How broad can it be if you go and study? Did you want to become a native doctor? Because, no, you, sorry, sir. It's a bit hard to see you holding that thing they hold and jumping every morning, you know, given how uh, corpulent you have become and going there. Uh, oh, share more, share oh, 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 oh. I love this thing. I mean, it's a bit hard to see. Now you are sounding like my, my mother. My mother was a very, very unlettered woman. And the day she heard I was reading Yoruba in the university. Uh, sorry, sir. In other words, I'm unlettered, have you? <laughs> <laughs> you know, my mom could not imagine that a man would travel all the way to the university to study Yoruba. In fact, the way she put it was, I abandele, she was single. I already he love you, but you're very bad. I've always been, I think I was born an unusual child. I was born in a church, in a Ladra church, where there were all kinds of prophecies that if I could survive the first seven years, then I was going to be very famous. And here you are. <laughs> but in reality, I don't know how anyone born in that kind of setting, rural setting, would ever be famous. Uh, but I think God will always create a way, a path, where there is no way. Mm. Yeah. My father died when I was 13, in 1973. Even the house where we were living, we couldn't pay the rent. So they chased us out. I had to go and squat in Mudakeke, where you had to wake up very early at 5 a.m., you know, so that you can see a very clean stream to fetch water. So, sorry, sir. What happens after 5 a.m.? After 5 a.m., other people would have woken up in the neighborhood, so everybody is scrambling for water. Okay. That's not much different where we used to say no should. Now, uh, it wasn't a stream. It was a tap, but basically the same thing. Oh, a tap was a luxury, you know. But what I'm trying to say is that in that background, you are going to a school where you have to, if at the name of the school alone, Local authority primary school. <laughs> how local can you be? <laughs> so, so how do you lie to somebody in the future that <laughs> even the name says it? Local. The name, local authority <laughs> primary school. And you know, you had to trek to that school. In front of the school was a shrine. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a, which kind of shrine? The traditional shrine of uh, You know, in, 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 in Ileife, there are so many deities. Yes, sir. And uh, they worship the deities a lot. And in this, only God knows what they <laughs> kept in that place. But there were all kinds of human beings crawling in and out of the place. And there you are in the school, and then you see people semi-nude dancing in front of the school. You know? So how would you now fulfill such a prophecy? When demons, when you are going to school every day, <laughs> you have to cross paths and ways with the demons. <laughs> but we thank God. And fortunately, I got a job as a library attendant at the University of Ife Library. And I think that is where my life changed. Okay. I, I came across a lot of books, came across a lot of scholars like Wole Show Inka, Kolyo Motor Show, and, you know, very great... Nigerians like uh, that. And so you read on your own. Uh, through so that. I was reading a lot of books on my own. So how did you, from, from your local authority school, they actually taught you, as local as it sounded, they actually taught you how to read English? Seriously speaking, the quality of education, even at that local level, was excellent. <laughs> you know, but not anymore these days. I, no, no, these days, you have to pay through your nose to send your kids to Kotonu, to Togo, to Ghana. Those are the local schools now. You're saying that even in Nigeria, even if you have the no, money? Now, people are sending their kids to schools in Togo, in Ghana, and those who can afford it are going beyond the seas to Europe, to America, even to Yemen. <laughs> Bob, no! Bob! <laughs> Your Yoruba is very good. Oh, thank you. My father... My father absolutely insisted, Bob D, on us reading the Bible in Yoruba every morning at family prayers and every night. My father would say to us, well, take the Bible and start reading. 
Oluwa ni Olusu Agunton mi emi ki yo sha lai ni o mu mi dubule ni papa ko if you say two two instead of two my father will say nonsense non nonsense ah tie mantin one coin then the next minute my father will switch over to queen's english i don't know what's wrong with you children you're supposed to take your language and learn it. so what will you teach your own children uh, and we used to think it was a lot of stress but my yoruba heritage is one of the things i am proudest of at this time in my life no but do you do you really know that i believe that prayers are quickly answered in yoruba <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm serious. When you see our mothers in those days, my mom was an aladurai. Tm iba gbe won. Oh. Ti oluwa ni le atekun re. Aye awon to te do sinu re. Nitori to fi dile so re ku pa. You could feel the vibrations. But when you are speaking English, that thing is weak. <laughs> <laughs>